How do you survive 50 hours of hell from Navy SEALs who are punishing you and yelling at you and screaming at you and you're doing physical exercise? This guy just did it. Steve Costello. How you doing, Steve? Yeah, good, James. Are you really doing good? Or are you no, really I feel, it, I feel a bit uh, run down at the moment after the weekend, after some light exercise over the weekend. Yeah, yeah. good job. Well, let's have a look at some of your injuries here. Let's, uh, before we get in, where are the injuries, Sean? Uh, it's kind of on my arms, bruises, yeah, just cuts. We had to do a lot of crawling through thorn bushes. Yeah. Yeah. And let's have a look at your leg as well. Uh, can you, can you, could that you... was a, yep, that was a pre-existing injury. We can't quite see it. Can you move, can you get in there a little bit? Yeah, wait a minute. Move it up. There we go. So what, what's underneath that? Uh, it's a, a skin infection called cellulitis. So, um, oh, that sounds good. That sounds healthy. <laughs> All right, so you had cellulitis, a leg injury going into this thing. Tell us what is Kokora? What is it? What is the SEAL fit? Yeah, it's incredible. It's um, just Google Navy SEAL Hell Week, and it will show you the thing that those guys go through. So the SEALs, they have this thing called Hell Week. You stay awake for five days, and it really is just to weed out the weak, see who is really committed to this kind of warrior process. And Mark Devine, a few years ago, Mark Devine heads up SEAL fit. He created... An equivalent camp which is three days to prepare SEAL candidates before they did the real thing and then civilians were saying Mark I want to do it myself so he opened it up to civilians um, I did marathons when I was younger I used to box when I was in college and I was looking for a new challenge I'd ha my son was four years old um, I'd kind of been in one or two jobs where I didn't feel like I was meeting my potential and when I heard about Kokoro, it really got the fire burning again. So I wanted to do something when I could, where I could really prove myself to myself. Yeah, I actually interviewed Mark Devine on the James Swanick Show podcast, in my podcast about six months ago, uh, and he's a badass. Now, to be clear, I haven't done it yet. I haven't done the Kokoro. And I'm he wants start, to. I want to do it now. <laughs> he keeps asking me questions. I know, I keep doing it. So Mark Devine, if you're watching this, I'm coming to do it. But just be go easy on me. Can you just be a little easy on me? So, um, okay, so walk us through exactly some of the hell that they, that they put you through. Well, first of all, you, you, you want to go through the hell. Why? Like, why do you want to just put yourself through hell for three days? I think in society at the moment, there's no real tests, particularly for guys, to prove, you know, your manliness. There's no real, you know, if you look at the ancient warrior traditions like Spartans, they all had this initiation process that they had to go through. You know, in, in, in the modern world, probably the hardest thing you have to do is maybe a couple of exams at university. So for me, I was looking for a real crucible experience where at times it felt like I was on the verge of death, but I knew I could get through it through, you know, using a strong mind, positivity, micro goals, um, and also just preparing physically for around two years beforehand. So you prepared for two years to do this thing? Two years, um, but where I went wrong for the first year, there was a lack of focus. I was doing everything. I was doing CrossFit. I was doing seal fit workouts. I was running. I was doing yoga. And I had a job at the time where it was taking up a lot of my time. And I just got completely burnt out. Mm. But I think it was more my mind playing tricks, just saying, Steve, you can't do it. How can you do 50 hours? So I kind of made an excuse and I postponed it. And then what I did at the start of the year was I quit my job mm. and just made preparing for seal fit more of a one thing. So I just focused on doing this as a one thing. Mm. At the start of the process, I paid for some coaching from Ben Greenfield, who is a ben, friend of James. Ben Greenfield Fitness, yeah. And he... Big shout out to Ben Greenfield. Hey, yeah. man. He'd done Kokoro two years prior, and he gave me a very focused training plan. And um, because I had to pay a bit of money for the training plan, it was only 20 minutes, that gave me accountability to follow through. It almost felt like I didn't want to let Ben down, you know. Mm. Why bother wasting his time if you're not going to apply what he said to you? Mm. So he gave me a focused training plan and then it was just balls to the wall. I, I focused doing one thing. I, luckily, I'd weaved into my life becoming a freelancer. So I had a gym in my back garden. So I just trained and did okay. freelance work at the same time. Okay, so you practiced, you mentally prepared for two years, you did some physical exercise. What happens? Explain or describe the process. Maybe not reveal everything because you want people to like go there and kind of be surprised. But what were some of the really horrendous things that they made you do, and some like physical activities and mental activities as well? I think right at the start is um, you have to line up on this uh, asphalt area called the grinder, 
and you're wearing a white t-shirt that says your name, I th there's something about putting your name on it makes you feel stronger, prouder, you know, when you see your own name. And you stood there, you're holding a weapon, which is a PVC pipe filled with sand, you've got a backpack on, and Mark Devine comes around and comes up to every one of you and he says, introduce your name, tell me what you do. And then he asks you questions, but the questions he asks you kind of like, oh, is he, does he not think I'm ready? So he said to me, you know, what's your name? I explained, what do you do? I explained. And then he said, are you ready? I said, well, I'm ready as I'll ever be. And he kind of looked at me and just said, okay, good luck. And, I think, and he also said, how old are you? And I'm thinking, God, does he think I look like crap? <laughs> does he think I'm not ready? I said, already I'm thinking, oh, maybe. And then he just screams, Kokoro 42, let's begin. And then all of these Navy SEALs and coaches just come running onto this grinder with water. There's guys on megaphones screaming at you like, back, feet, belly. It's just, the idea is just to create absolute chaos. Um, you have to keep hold of your weapon. Um, there's SEALs coming around trying to kick it out of your hand. If you lose your weapon, you've got a bear, bear crawl after it. you also given a swim buddy. So if me and James were swim buddies, if James has to go to the toilet, I have to go to the toilet with him. Um, if James loses his weapon, I have to go get his weapon with him. So my uh, swim buddy lost his weapon pretty quickly. I had to go get his weapon. Then my swim buddy got chucked in an ice bath. He had to keep his head under water in a, like a pool of ice for 20 seconds. And then I did it as well. And that really takes the breath out of you. So they gave us a bit of a beat down for about three hours, and then we went into what so, we called the... So three hours is still long. I mean, I do yeah. work... I've done CrossFit workouts that are like seven minutes, and at the yeah. end of it, I'm like... <gasps> yeah. But this was like continuous for three hours. I, yeah. And you were telling me that you'd involved burpees and push-ups yeah, and pull-ups. Yeah, it was calisthenics. So burpees, uh, air squats, mm. push-ups, lots of push-ups. Um, but because it's body weight, and if you're quite durable, if you've done quite a lot of yoga and restoration... You can do that stuff all day. I mean, I can't anyway. I'm built more for endurance. Mm. If it was lifting heavy weights, I'd be pretty tired. Okay, yeah. so then let's let's get into some some more stuff. So we're doing that for three hours, which in its in itself is a huge Herculean athletic task, right? Then what happens? Uh, you do a thing called the uh, physical standards. So they have physical standards, which is fifty push-ups in two minutes, uh, ten dead hang pull-ups. So. It's going right to the bottom and then pulling yourself right up mm. and then right to the bottom. So it's not like a kipping mm. pull up. You have to do 50 air squats in two minutes, 50 sit ups in two minutes. Wow. And then you have to do a one mile run okay. within nine and a half minutes, which is, I mean, most people could do that. Now, to be clear, we're not going to reveal everything that has to happen here. We're just going to like skim the surface to give you an idea, give you a flavor. Because again, we don't want to give too much away. Uh, we we kind of want to go in there not knowing some aspects of it, right? And I would just see, I'll just YouTube Seal for Kokoro. You you will see for yourself what happens. It's... Yeah. So then you were telling me that they there's a lot of hanging out in the lake and the surf where you've got really cold water uh, um, splashing over you and that's quite challenging physically and mentally, right? It can be. I mean, as part of my training, I live by the I live close to the ocean, so I would do a lot of open water swims. But it, it what made it challenging is that it's at night time and you're just in there for hours, so you have to link arms and um, to keep warm. And then you have to walk backwards into the water, and it's the Pacific, so you're getting smashed by these waves. And then you have to lie down, and you don't know when the next wave is coming, and then all of a sudden you'll get hit by a wave, it just goes over your head, it's going up your nose and your ears. And you feel like you're drowning because you're getting dragged back into the water by this by a powerful surf. And then you get out, you have to do some more calisthenics, you have to do this thing called a sugar cookie, where you get wet and sandy, you roll around in the sand, you basically so you can't see any skin, it's covered in sand. And then the instructors will go, hit the surf again, and you have to run back in and hit the surf. Now, at this point, a couple of guys were getting hyperthermia, and they, they had to get pulled out. Um, but generally, you have to put on a bit of weight beforehand. You know, if you've got a bit of fat on you, you can handle the cold a little bit better. Now, when you say a couple of people got hyperthermia, a couple of people had quit by this stage as well. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, when, when we got to the beach, it was dark. And one of the coaches said something like, tonight is going to be the worst night of your life. <laughs> and, we're not, and we're not going to go home until at least four people quit. Oh, excellent. I'm happy to stay all night. I'm wrapped up. I've got coffee. I'm good to go. But we're not moving until someone quits. I think in the end, three people quit. Um, but he did say, you know, if someone wants to quit now, you know, go home. And so the, there were a couple of people who did quit, right? And yep. what do they do? They say, I'm out. Like yeah, just say, I'm out. You know, I, I quit. You know, they do everything where it's a choice, which I think is great. You know, you are consciously making that decision to say, 
I do not want to continue in this process, mm. um, which I think is quite a powerful thing. In now, the actual real Navy SEALs, they make you ring a bell three times. Yeah. Now, there were some mental games that they played with you. Not the game, the, f- the fun games, but there were some... They were challenging you mentally, right? Like you were saying that they'd make you cold, they'd promise you a nice cup of coffee and some food, and then they'd take it away from you, and yeah. they were kind of like tricking you. Oh, in- well, when people were... So, we're on the beach freezing, and we do this thing, it's called Nuts to Butts, where I'm semi-naked, and I literally would, would be hugging James from behind just to stay warm. You know, you wouldn't do this normally, but you're so cold, you have to do it. And then you look around, there's a, there's a guy who's just quit and he's got, you know, the thermal blanket on, he's drinking coffee, <laughs> kind of semi-smiling, and you're like, ah, oh. it'd be kind of nice to be in that van at the moment, but you're like, no, that's instant gratification, you know. I'm going to stay through the process and I know the rewards will be bigger. And then you said that they made you climb a mountain. Tell us about that. Yeah, the mountain was an incline like that. You had to walk up with this heavy pack on. And it was dark. I would say this was the hardest, but we've been awake for around maybe 36 hours. Um, it was dark, and you, we're walking up this mountain, and I was just hallucinating. I was sick. Tigers were jumping out of the walls. Um, I was tigers I was, were jumping out of the walls. I was seeing, you were hallucinating. Yeah, the yeah. I was seeing. I was seeing extravagant buildings in front of me, but there was there was nothing there. It was. I've never done drugs, but I imagine that's what drugs would be like. It was the weirdest experience ever. And then when I got to the mountain, got to the top of the mountain, they let us have a rest. And I, I felt literally close to death. You know, I, my breathing was all funny. I could bet I was on the floor, I could barely stand up. And then they gave us this thing called an MRE. It's, uh, it's basically a food in a package which never goes out of debt. It's full of preservatives, but it's got about, about 3,000 calories in it. And I scoffed that down. And within 10 minutes later, I was, I was back to life. It was All I needed was just something to eat. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, what was the lowest point? What was the the lowest mental point? And well, and physical, like physically and mentally. When did you just go? Oh man, I think I'm gonna quit. Or this just, is hell. I think two things were hard. One was the mountain. I think the other one, which I found really hard, was um, I think it was humility and, e- and ego. Was um, helping other teammates who were who were struggling. Um, I don't know, something was starting to grate on me because there'd be maybe one or two teammates where I was always having to help them. And it's like, I've prepared, why didn't you prepare? And they say at the start, the idea of Kokora is not about being the guy who's smashing out 20 pull-ups. It's not about being the guy at the quickest, the quickest on the runs. It's about being a really good leader and a really a humble leader and a really good teammate where you're looking out for other people before yourself. And I found that really hard, you know, we're not really conditioned that way in society to look out for other people, it's more, what can I do for myself? And that was the hardest thing, hardest hurdle I had to get past mentally. We also, the coaches also said, you know, everyone's in pain, so don't, they have this saying, suffer in silence, because if if you're grunting, that's going to that's gonna weaken me. So the hardest thing is, you know, you're really tired, but and you want to say, you want to complain, but you can't because that's going to weaken your teammates. Everyone's in pain, everyone's got blisters, everyone's tired, everyone's hallucinating. So the main thing was helping teammates who who kind of weren't pulling their way, and I've been carrying them all day, but um, they still added massive value in other evolutions. Other evolutions are uh, workouts, so people have strengths and weaknesses. So how many hours were you awake for? 50. So, so you don't sleep at all. They don't even let you take a little nap or whatever. No, it's like... And and changeover is a very quick. It's like right, put on some new gear, be back in five minutes. Everything they give you is an impossible deadline. So you're always failing. So it's always never good enough. But you learn to just deal with it. If you go into it like, knowing that it's not personal, they're going to scream at you. They're going to say you're nothing and just see it as a bit of fun. That. You'll be fine. See it as a bit of fun as they're poor, making you swim yeah. in the freezing cold Pacific Ocean and yeah. making you do 100 burpees and run up mountains with blisters and yelling abuse at you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 50 hours without sleep. Now, you also had to carry a lot of things and swim across a lake and carry stones. We won't go into that now because, we, again, we don't want to give away too much. But um, what happened, explain the, the feeling on that final sort of like couple minutes where Mark Devine walks out and says, you're in, Kokora 42, what does he say, Kokora 42? Kokora 42, you are secured. Kokora 42, you are secured. What happens in that moment? 
Well, just before, he does a yoga session with you. Um, he's just released a new book called Kokoro Yoga. Look, before I came across Divine's teachings, I wasn't into yoga. I thought it was kind of for girls. I thought it was the spiritual thing. But what he's done is he's, he's put... He's taken yoga and made it very westernized for athletes. So it's more doing movement to make you a better athlete rather than saying mantras. Look, I know mantras are important, but I think this has make it, make, made it a bit more accessible. So check out his new book, Kokoro Yoga. So he turns up on um, this camp where we're at and he does some yoga with us. And then he, he says at the end, okay, lie down in a dead man's pose. A dead man's pose is where you just lie on the floor. And he says, just relax, you've come so far, and you're literally ready to fall asleep. I was screaming to keep my eyes open. Some people were had passed out, and then all of a sudden these coaches come through, get that, blah, 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 throw water all over you, puppies, back rolls, making you do all this stuff just to shock you. So you think it's over, and then hell breaks loose again. And the idea is um, teaching you, Look, the fight is never over. You, you've always got to be prepared. You know, there's always mm. going to be curveballs coming in. The key thing, which I kept saying to myself all weekend, was stay, 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 stay in the moment. Stay in the moment. Don't focus on the thousand burpees I've got to do. Just stay on doing this one burpee perfectly. Okay, I've done one. Next one. Because if you think about, oh, I've got to do 50 hours, I've got to do a thousand burpees, mm. 800 press ups, it's just too much. Yeah. Yeah. If you're wanting to speak to Steve one-on-one uh, -on -one and actually hire him to give you a training workout regime, give you some advice, just like Ben Greenfield gave you, uh, gave you some advice, uh, you can reach Steve how? What email address should they get you at? Steve W. Costello, Steve W. Costello at gmail.com. Or you can reach me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Steve W. Costello. So if you're thinking about doing Kokora and you really want to get some in-depth knowledge and talk about your situation, reach out to Steve at his email address and schedule a time to speak with him on the phone and uh, he can give you a little bit more guidance, a little bit more official guidance. Um, any final words then on who it's for and who it is not for? Like who watching right now should definitely, definitely not do it and who here definitely should consider doing it? You will know in your heart as soon as you hear it if it's for you or if it's not. If you want to do it, it's a massive commitment. You've got to have a strong burning why. So my why was, I've got a son, he's nearly five. I want to be that father who doesn't say, Tyler, you need to do this and that. I want to set the example. And then hopefully, he'll maybe do it himself. But I want to be a leader leading the way. And then maybe he'll follow in my path if he doesn't. As long as he's his own person and takes ownership over his choices, I'm, I'm happy with that. But it starts with me. The second reason was I had a lot of success in my early 20s and now in my early 30s. I felt in my late 20s and early 30s I lost my way. So I just really needed to prove myself to myself again. I wanted to prove to myself, yeah, you've still got that fire in you. So you need, number one, you need a really strong why. Number two, you need to be deeply committed to the process. And I think the, the strong why helps you in the process. The Seal Fit Workouts, check out the book 8 Weeks to Seal Fit by Mark Define. I literally followed the eight weeks to seal fit operator watts to the letter over a 10 week period. Now these workouts are two to three hours long. And then on the weekend you have to go for a long ruck where you put on a backpack, mm. you fill it with 20 pounds of sand and you go hiking up a mountain and it can literally take up all your weekend. Mm. I went, luckily, you know, my, my son's mom was really understanding, would look after him, but I hardly saw my family through the training because I was so focused on this on this one thing. So it's a big time commitment. Uh, you need a strong why. You will get pretty burnt out at times. I'm going to be writing an article soon for Mind Body Green on how I incorporated good recovery. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, they're the two main things. Be prepared to put in the time, be prepared, have a strong why. And number three, you know, be prepared to fail. You might not make it. People prepared really well. Um, I think 20 people started, only 13 finished. And most people quit within three hours. Wow. What, does, what does that tell you? you know? That's amazing. that you did. Yeah. So you were part of the, the... So a third quit or a quarter quit? Something like that, I think. Yeah. Let's just... We're going to go out and do a little Snapchat now. If you're watching this, we're going to go to my Snapchat, which is at James Swanick. I do a little 10-second daily motivation videos. I'm here with Steve Costello, who did the Kokora Navy SEAL training. The number one tip to get through hell, the hell 50 hours. Here it comes in a snap. All right, so we're just going to send that. Well, it's decided to have, there we go. And your number one tip, ready, Steve? Yeah. Is, go.
have a strong why. You need to remind yourself why you're doing something really hard. There you go. There you go. Check me out on Facebook as well, on Facebook Live, at James Swanick. All right, there we go. We're going to send that off. Does, so, anyone, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have the own challenges that they're working on at the moment? Yeah, so if you're watching this uh, on Facebook Live as uh, live, if you're watching this live, because we are live as we're recording this, then go ahead and ask a question of Steve Costello. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, make sure you share this with uh, someone right now who you think might want to do this. And also uh, tag a friend in here as well if you're watching this on Facebook. If you're listening on the podcast, The James Swanick Show, please do uh, uh, share this episode with someone who you think might want to do the Kokora training. And maybe even just reach out, share this with Mark Devine himself. You can actually send this video to Seal Fit on Facebook and Mark Devine on Seal Fit as well. Do any one of those, uh, any one of those things. So we had a question yeah. here. What's... Ron Rembish says, "What sneakers do you wear when you're doing Kokoro?" Um, yeah, I wear um, Inof. In, they call Inofs. Inofs. Um, I think it's <coughs> Inofs uh, two four six. They're a really light running shoe. They hold up very well. You also have to wear um, Special Forces boots. I wore Nike Special Operations boots. But if you're going to do Kokoro, you need to break in your boots. Um, that means you need to go on long runs with them. When you first wear them, you need to... When you first get them, you need to put them in warm water and then put them on and then go for a walk so your feet mould into them. A lot of people have been cut out of Kokoro because they didn't break in the boots. And then they got so many blisters, they just chopped them down, they couldn't start working. So number one, get your boots. Um, I would recommend the Nike Special Ops boots. And then um, the, the second thing is you need to double sock, uh, wigwam, uh, good socks, um, wool socks and a sock liner. And the third thing is I used a, a goo called hike goo, um, where you, you cover your feet in, in hike goo. Um, and that stops blisters. Hey, we've got, a, we've got seal fit. Yeah, Seal Fit's Fit. asking, what was your lowest and highest point in the weekend? So let's deal with the, yeah. the lowest point. What was the lowest of the low? Probably the mountain, um, because I was hallucinating, I was tired. Um, you know, your body is saying, stop, stop, stop. Um, but there's a great Seal Fit coach uh, called Derek Price. Um, he said something when he did Kokora of, never make a decision in the dark. You don't make a decision in the dark. Things are always worse at night time, your mind plays tricks. But soon the night time's over and when the sun is rising, it's the best feeling ever. So maybe that's the highest point. The highest point is, wow, I got through that really hard evolution. I, got, I, got, I, I, I conquered the mountain. The sun's rising. I know there's only a few hours left. Easy day, you know. And obviously the highest point is completing a challenge which was two years in the making. Yeah, and that moment was pretty, <coughs> was pretty special. You're, he's very beat up at the moment. I, I saw him yesterday and he looked like death. It was like 36 hours after you completed it. And his eyes were... I mean, we're wearing Swanee's blue light blocking glasses right now to, to protect ourselves from the, the lights here. And if you wear these, it, it helps you sleep later on at night. And, and Steve obviously trying to get as much sleep as he can. But how, like, in the, in the it's been, what, 72 hours now yeah. since you completed it? Yeah. How did you feel in the first 24 hours? How did you feel in the first 48 hours? And how do you feel now? First 24 hours, pretty delirious. There was a lot of adrenaline running through me, so felt pretty good. Um, but since that, I felt, to be honest, I felt pretty shocking. Last night, James was going to take me to LA Dodgers game, and I was like, James, I need to just go to bed. I, I know, I had field tickets. I had yeah. field tickets for the LA Dodgers to take Steve. He's never been to a baseball never game. Never been to a baseball game, but 12 hours of sleep was more appealing. <laughs> and then uh, today, I feel maybe 10% better, but Sealfit did say you will feel pretty terrible for a couple of weeks. That's normal. Yeah. When I'm back in Australia, I have a thing called uh, intravenous vitamin therapy where they stick a needle in your arm and put a lot of vitamins in you. That seems to help with the training. Um, but I'm in America at the moment, so I'll have to wait until I go home. Yeah, so I hope that answers your question, yeah. uh, Seal Fit. So, yeah, you, don't, you still don't look, look too good, to be honest. No, that, you I look, look great. You, look, <laughs> you have looked better. Uh, <laughs> how, much, how much sleep are you planning on getting tonight? You think you're like, like, is your sleep disrupted? Is your circadian yeah, rhythm? Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like I've got a fever, I'm burning up. I keep having to wake up and go to the toilet. Really? Yeah, I don't feel great. Why do you need to keep going to the toilet? I think it's because I'm um, having to drink so much water. You know, you're very dehydrated yeah. at the end of the at the end of the course. Yeah. But I wouldn't change it for the world. Is I've never felt worse, but I've never felt better. 
you know. That's a great, that's a great feeling, yeah. isn't it? Never yeah. felt worse, never felt better. I, I did a marathon when I ran the New York Marathon some years ago, and at the end of it, I was like, oh, this is painful, but at the same time, I was like, oh, yes. Um, but you did 50 hours without sleeping. It's like, I get cranky if I don't get eight hours sleep you, at night. you got to remember, you're doing this with world-class coaches mm -hmm. who, they know just to, what exactly to say you at the right moment. So at one point, I was doing burpees, it was getting really hard, and one of the coaches says, Costello, don't, um, don't quit on me now. And that was enough to just keep me going. There was another moment where a coach grabbed me by the shoulder and he looked me right in the eye and said, are you good? And that just kind of gave me strength. And also you get strength from saying, look, I can't quit on my teammates. I need to help them. I'm, I'm here for a reason. I'm not here for me. I'm here to help my teammates through it. So although you might be in the gym and working out and it's really hard, when you've got world-class coaches around you uh, who have just dominated their field for years and you've got like a bunch of warriors who are just getting after it, there's no better feeling. You get energy from that, and that's what drives you forward. Yeah. Steve Costello, who completed Kokoro 42, created by Mark Devine and the Seal Fit team. Uh, go ahead and congratulate Steve right now. Leave a little comment down below and say, well done, good job, whatever words of encouragement you have for Steve. A Herculean effort. He's almost inspired me to start to sign up for it and do it myself. I, I think I'm... Pretty tough. Start with, start with a 20x. So if you if you don't want to do Kokoro, you can do 20x. It's Kokoro, but only over 12 hours. Or they have other courses where it's introduction to seal fit, it's yeah. a free day course. Yeah. Or Mar Divine's got an outstanding online program called Unbeatable Mind, where it focuses more on the mental aspect. Troy, what was your why? Really good question. So um, I'm 34. I've got a, um, a son called Tyler. He's nearly five. Um, I wanted to be a father who rather than saying, Tyler, you need to do this, you need to do that. I wanted to set the example, and then maybe he'll follow my path, but as long as he takes ownership over of who he is and is not afraid to get after his dreams, that's perfect for me. So, Seal Fit, which seemed, Seal Fit Kokoro, which seemed impossible, I thought that's a really good example to Tyler. In Seal Fit, you have to do a lot of log lifting, you know, pushing logs above your head, and Tyler seems to be into it already. So, if we're out on a nature walk and he sees a log, he seems to want to pick it up and push it above his head. That was my first why. My second why was I wanted to prove myself to myself. I had a lot of kind of career success in my early 20s. Um, and then in my late 20s, um, I made a few bad career choices. Um, and then I had a son. And I just, it felt like everything went a bit sideways. Like life got put on hold. And then now that my son was a little bit older, I just thought, right, it's time to get back in the game. I need to do something where... I can prove myself to myself and light that fire in my belly again. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, number one was being an example to others. Number two was, you know, do you want to go through your life always making excuses or do you want to just set a goal and get after it? Um, I've always been really into adventure and the outdoors, so okay. this seemed like a perfect perfect way to test. Do, is it, do you think Do you think I'd be able to handle it, Steve, knowing knowing me? As, as yeah, you I think you've got a strong mind. Um, yeah, it, was like, it wasn't like a yes, it was like, yeah, 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 yeah maybe. I think... You have to be really committed. You know, a lot of yeah. people say, yeah, I'd love to do Kokoro. I was one of those people too, but it, doing it and actually doing the work, doing the eight weeks to see if it operates awards consistently every day, you know, you have to just show up and do it. Um, when I was actually preparing for Kokoro, seriously, very few people knew about it. I just wanted to concentrate on doing the work rather than just saying, oh, I'm right. doing this. It's a big commitment. All right, there you go. There you go. Steve Costello, who successfully completed Kokoro 42. Thank you to Mark Devine. Thank you to Seal yeah. Fit. Thank for you for all the Seal Fit coaches and the amazing Showing teammates. Showing the, injury. Show the injuries again. Showing yeah. the injuries. Can't really see it. Uh, yeah, crawling crawling through fawn bushes. Yeah, a few bruises. Um, but yeah, nothing too bad. Yeah, amazing teammates, amazing coaches. It will change your life if you want to do it. Um, Absolutely, hands down, the best program out there at the moment. Okay, all right. So, a couple of call to actions just before we go. If you want to reach Steve uh, directly, Steve W Costello at Gmail at Gmail dot com. On Twitter, Steve W Costello. Okay. Uh, tag three friends who you think should watch this and try and encourage them to do Kokoro. Uh, share this to Mark Devine if you can. Just share it to him so he sees it. Thank you very much to Seal Fit. Uh, these are Swanee's blue blocking glasses that we're wearing. Swanee'sglasses.com. They help you sleep. Steve's going to go and sleep now. I'm going to send him home and 
have a little bit of a snooze because he, he needs it, right? Um, and, uh, oh yeah, if you want to listen to my interview with uh, Mark Devine, go to the James Swanick Show podcast in iTunes. I think I published it maybe four yeah. or five months ago. It's and listen, It's called Toughen Up. Yeah. Go and check it out. See ya!